This is CBS. Top cop and OJ case exposed. Watch the next occurring affair. Dad? What's going on? You're not even dressed yet. Sure I am. Can you tell your mom? Am I dressed or what? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> You're too. dressed. They love you. Matt, come on. I, I left you a note. We're supposed to be at dinner tonight at the country club with Vanessa. Didn't you get my note? What, the one that said I'd be out on my butt if I didn't show up? Yeah, I got it. Look, you're gonna need a clean shirt. You gotta get a tie. You gotta get a, a jacket. You don't have a jacket. I, maybe Dylan has one in the closet. Hey, would you hold on a second? I don't know if you've noticed it, but you're not exactly dressed yet either. The reason I'm not ready is I've been playing with my little nephew here waiting for you to get home. Where were you? I got second traffic. Look, I called Vanessa, and, and she said it's fine that we're late, but, you know, when you call, they say it's fine. It's never fine, so I just... Oh. Oh, well, what's going on with my hair? <laughs> Would you calm down a second? Look, you go get dressed. I'll have little Petey help you pick out a shirt. And you come back, we'll be ready to go. Everything will be fine. Okay, it's just, you know, I, I really want everything to go well. Because last time we planned this thing with Vanessa, you didn't even show up. And I got in this huge fight with Dylan in front of his whole family and everything. And I'm just really concerned. You know, I want it to go well. You can understand that, right? Well, sure. It'll be fine. Why wouldn't it be? Is uh, everything all right, Mrs. Lovitz? Oh, everything's just fine, thanks, Robert. I, I know we're getting off to a little slow start. I hope it won't pose any problems for anybody in the kitchen. Oh, no, not at all. Good. My, what a beautiful compact. Oh, yes, isn't it pretty? I, uh, I got it on a little trip I took recently, actually, but, but you know how those things are. It seems like another lifetime now. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, I wanted to thank you for getting everything together so nicely at such short notice. Uh, family reunion? Yes, I guess you could say that. Most everybody coming is family or else somebody that we've known for a long time. Uh. Except for one young man. So, I guess I'd better be the perfect hostess and place him right next to me. That made her do over there just bowing and scraping to Vanessa. Why does everybody treat her like she's Queen Elizabeth? She always has been a very hefty tipper. How can you possibly joke about her after the way she cut you off? Because I'm happily married, and Vanessa is sad and lonely, and I feel sorry for her. Well, I don't. I would just love to discover one chink in her armor and let her know what it's like to have people who used to respect you cut you dead. Better? Am I interrupting? Not really. There seems to be a delay in Vanessa's festivities. I think I'll take a coffee break. Surveillance work makes one a bit thirsty. Go easy on that, Alan. Don't forget, you're meeting Roger tonight. Don't worry, I'll have all my wits about me. But I may not need to. Roger's not quite as sharp as he used to be. You're sure about that? Well, he's given me everything I've needed. And I haven't even broken a sweat. <laughs> yes, and when a real moment of truth comes and Roger served his purpose, I'll remove him from the picture so fast he won't know what hit him. Now listen, you can bag out. I will understand. Roger, now that we know Alan's out, we've got to know what else is in that file. I wish there were another way, but the original of that file is in Ross's office, and that's where I have to go. That is, if you can get me the keys. Mm. I know. Look, I'm telling you, you don't have to do it. I'll understand. No, I just wish you weren't married to our daughter. I mean, what choice do we have? We know what Alan is capable of. Our only chance of protecting ourselves is to find out what he plans. And the only way to do that is to find out who else besides Alice has control of the assets that used to belong to him. You're right. I know you're right. Alan thinks he's got all the time in the world. He thinks that nobody's on to him. But tonight, I'm going to unmask him and show him the error of his ways. Mm -hmm. He's not even going to know what hit him.
using one of these for hours. Why, what's wrong with you? Oh, Vanessa gave me the cold shoulder a little while ago, and now Blake wants to go over and challenge her to a fist fight or something. Well, the woman makes me furious. I mean, she knows that Ross was just doing his job. He, he was being fair. It was nothing personal. And not only that, everything turned out for the best. But still, mm. she won't cut him any slack. She's becoming very protective. Doesn't want people to take advantage of my good nature. Oh, you're a lucky man. I'd be even luckier if you would join us. Oh, please. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Yes, well, I'm supposed to meet Roger, but I suppose I just... Oh, I am so sorry. Look what I did to your jacket. Right. Oh, and, uh, you know what I'll get? What? Uh, I, I know the best thing for this is some club soda. Let me go to the bar, and I'll be right back. Okay. Hold on. Nick, Mindy, tiring of prison food? You know, actually, prison food is starting to look pretty good. At least we're dining with a better class of people. Ah, I wish I could have been there to witness it. The entire family reuniting behind bars, passing the pate. Wasn't there a TV movie like that, The Waltons Do San Quentin? You know, Roger, if we had realized that jail fascinated you this much, we might have been able to wrangle you an invitation. Oh, don't worry about it. He'll be there sooner or later. It's just a matter of time. Nick, tell me, what did you make of your dear old Uncle Alan? What do you care? I think he's changed. I suppose jail will do that to a person. Mm, I imagine. Tragic confinement humbles the great man. Is he all cleaned up and rehabilitated? Well, never mind. I'll find out for myself soon enough. That was fast. Did you... Hurry, please. You can find out. Okay, all right. I'll be back as soon as I can. <laughs> I love you. Mom? Was that Dad? Anything happening? Nothing interesting. There's a few people there, but um, most of her guests haven't arrived yet. You do love that old clock of your father's, don't you? <laughs> yes. But I don't like the way it looks here. It needs to be back in my office where it belongs. Fine things deserve to be surrounded by objects of equal provenance. It's brandy, for example. The glass you drink it from must set off a certain color, catch the light. The drink itself, without the proper amenities, isn't worth having. I learned that while I was uh, away. How's that? A few months after I'd started serving my sentence, the food was making me physically ill. I'd lost 30 pounds. I was certain I was going to die in prison. And then, one day, I woke up. I realized that my death would be a victory to those who were so anxious to uh, convict me. So I resolved then and there that I would survive. So, to celebrate, I bribed one of the guards to bring me this. I salivated, waiting for it. And lo and behold, one day I had it in my hand. A hundred-year-old bottle of brandy and a tin cup. I took one drink and poured it down the drain. Not the whole bottle. It would have been a sacrilege otherwise. What's happening with Vanessa? Ooh, she's talking to her stepdaughter about fall clothes. Ah, yes. Vanessa is always in fashion. Her closet is organized to a fare thee well. Yes, just like her tidy little mind. That's what makes getting her signature such a formidable task. She's talking to Mindy's husband. Uh, you should hear this. Oh, you knew my Uncle Alan pretty well, didn't you? Well, I don't know that Alan let anybody know him pretty well, or even at all. But I, I worked with him, and I guess you could say I had a relationship with him of sorts. Well, he's supposed to be getting out of prison in a few months. Do you have any feelings about that? Look, no offense, but it was a lifetime ago that I worked at Spalding, and the company really doesn't mean that much to me. I'm very firmly ensconced at Lewis Oil. And that and my family keep me busy. 
I tell you, trying to raise a baby and a teenager at the same time, now that's a thing of wonder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand that Spalding Enterprises wouldn't be first on your priority list, but you better believe that it's going to be first on Alan's. Now, he's not too keen about me and my mother running the store, so I'd advise you to be prepared for a visit when he gets out of jail. I am. Your mother told me. Well, she reminded me that I'm one of the trustees for his folding holdings. So I know very well he'll be coming my way and he'll be trying to coerce me into signing something. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Um, he'll probably try anything that he can think of. Is there anything that he might try that could work? God, I can see myself in here. Look at... Oh, a mess. Why didn't you tell me that? I don't look like death warmed over. I need some lipstick or something, don't I? You have on lipstick. <laughs> I do? Oh, Michelle, you know, it's just that your dad and I... Well, this is the first time that we're going out in public as an um, engaged couple, you know, so people will be looking at us. You know how they do when something new or different in town. They all stare, and I just feel like Vanessa sometimes gives you that once over. You ever seen that? Is it just Vanessa? Yeah, what do you mean? Well, I mean, lots of other people there, the family and all, like, um, Mr. and Mrs. Spaulding. Nick and Mindy? Yeah, I mean, didn't you used to go out with him? Oh, <clears throat> you are a very clever girl, Michelle. I think if you continue to be this clever, I might not marry your dad. <laughs> How much do you know about Nick, Mindy, and me? Oh, forget that I asked. You know, listen, I don't... I want to give you the wrong impression because I don't really care what they think about me. There was a time that I did care, but you, Dad, help me not feel like that anymore. I can pretty much hold my head high in front of anybody. I just would like to look terrific while I was holding my head high. Is there anything wrong with that? Then you have nothing to worry about. I just wish I could say the same. Why? What's the matter? Well, I, I'm just nervous about tonight. What if I say something dumb? I mean... Well, what do you mean? You've known these people for years. You've probably gone over to their house a hundred times. Yeah, but it was different then. Bill and I weren't little kids. I mean, we were... It's just that... You know, we care about different things now. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's because you guys are like boyfriend and girlfriend type of thing, right? I mean, we don't exactly call it that. No. But, I mean, we do hang out a lot at school, and he waits for me at my locker and walks me to class, and I save him a seat at the cafeteria. But I, some of the boys tease him, like Ben Reed and other guys, and he's so great about it, he just tells them to shut up. So I guess he's like a boyfriend. Yeah. Sounds like a good boyfriend, actually. Isn't it a relief to have a guy that doesn't care what anybody else thinks or says? I mean, we are lucky when... Oh, where have you been? We have been waiting for hours for you. Yes. We're ready to go for hours. Look at us. Well, what do you think? Ta-da! Couple real glamour pusses. Yeah, very nice. Not, I mean, it's not quite right for tonight, though, is it? I asked him to buy... Oh, wait a minute. I cannot believe this. You are not going to pull the bikini routine again, are you? Because I'm wearing this dress tonight. I think it looks fine. And I, as a matter of fact, I think it's boring, if anything. And Michelle, would you get my wallet? It's upstairs. My bedroom on the bureau, I think. Michelle, would you go get my wallet, please? Sure. Thank you. Oh, I love what you're wearing. Thank you. Did you hear that? And before she told me that she thought I looked great. Oh, why does she know she's a little kid? Sit down. Oh, no, great. You're the most beautiful woman that God has ever put on this earth, and I have spent the... In What's with the <laughs> slitty eyes? I have spent the entire day hoping I wasn't going to wake up from this dream where you said that you would marry me. But I don't want you wearing the dress, Eve. I didn't say that. Yes, I you did. You as not... much as said it isn't right. I... It's not I... Uh, No, right. I didn't say it like that. I said it wasn't finished. It needed something. It needed something to be added to it. There. Now, you thought that I was such a tightwad, such a skinflint, that I wasn't even going to come up with a ring, didn't you? 
Huh? Tell the truth. It's a ring? Yeah. Can I open it? Actually, I wish you would, yes. Oh! Oh, my gosh. It is so beautiful. No, 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 you don't have to take that one off. Hmm. I don't want to take this one off. Okay. I don't want anything to, to detract from this. Except maybe a wedding band. like a promise, you know, a promise that you are going to live your life together the best possible way it can be imagined, right? Okay, now, if I agree to that promise, and you are part of this life among the three of us, then you have to be engaged, too. And, my dear, you need a ring to be engaged. No, wait, that's yours. I've seen you wearing it. Oh, no, I was just keeping this warm till the right person came around. Michelle, it would make me so happy if you would wear this ring. Thank you. There you go. It fits. It fits. Hi. You didn't read it. Oh, that was from you? No, actually, that was from Frank and Eleni. What was from me were the hundreds of messages that you never return. Look, Matt, I, um, I really need to say something to you. Well, go ahead, Lucy. You're usually a one-woman conversation anyway. Shoot. I know that, that we kind of got off to a terrible start and that you probably definitely hate me. And I don't blame you for it, but... I just found out the truth, and I really owe you an apology. What truth? That you saved my niece's life. And that was what the letter's about. It's from Frank and Eleni. They want you to know that any time you need anything to go to them, because they want to pay you back for the best gift on their life that you could ever have given to them. Well, what, what happened to the homeless guy? That was not the guy that saved Marina's life. How do you know that? He said he did. Because I know. This is crazy, Lizzie. You know, a little kid's in trouble. She comes out okay, and everybody's looking for a hero. So they pick the, the guy who's closest to the scene that night, and... I'm no hero, Lucy. I'm the same guy you called a coward. Right, which I could cut my tongue off for saying. Well, let's don't get over dramatic about it. It's pointless to talk about anyway. No one was there. We don't know what happened, so... Want a bet? This isn't a hero. I sure don't know what is. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't believe that you saved your life. Why didn't you say something to me? Hey, Matt, good news. Hi. Good news. Hi. We're not the only ones who are running late and me related to the hospital, so, uh... They're gonna stop and give us a ride over the country club. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Bridget. Hey, did Matt tell you that we have an exciting thing going on tonight? No, no. What are you doing? Uh, well, Vanessa's having a big dinner for her family and our family, and so Matt's gonna get to meet Peter's other mother tonight. Isn't that exciting? That was Ed. He and Eve are on their way over, and they're bringing the Reardon contingent. Oh, yes. Bridget and her infamous brother. Now, what do you know about him? Well, not much. Dylan doesn't seem to be overly fond of him, but that could just be a case of two personalities clashing. You might end up liking him enormously. Well, I suppose so. I seem to have pretty eclectic tastes. I mean, I was just reminded that I... I actually liked Alan at one time. Yeah. 
Me too. Well, it looks like my dear old Uncle Alan had a way with the ladies. <laughs> well, he's an interesting man, and, uh... Well, when I knew him, he had a very courtly, old-world kind of charm about him. Yeah. Besides, I never could understand why people were so frightened of him. The one thing that you could know about Alan was that if he really wanted something, sooner or later, he would tip his hand. He may have learned a few new card tricks in prison, Vanessa. Oh, yeah? Well, I hope he's not planning to try him out on me, because he's going to be sorely disappointed. Well, you would not believe how hard it is to find a simple bottle of club soda in this joint. Evidently. I was about to call out the National Guard, for heaven's sake. Did you have Polly? I'm I just going to feel terrible. I've ruined you, Jack. You haven't ruined it all. It's fine. Look, if you promise not to spill it, I'll buy you a drink, all right? Oh. That is, if you have time. You said you had to meet Rogers? Oh, actually, yeah. he was here. He, he got beeped. He had to go back to the station. All the better. You can join us for dinner, then. Oh, thanks, but I promised Roger I'd wait for him. He won't be too long. Okay. Hey, I think the club soda's done a trick. I think I'll be just fine. Maybe a little moist. <laughs> Hope I'm not carrying anything in my pockets that will mildew. I don't <laughs> think so. It's odd. What is it? My keys are missing. Former assets, Mr. Spaulding requires the signatures of the trustees named below. Alexander Spaulding, Vanessa Lewis, and Blake. I'm so glad to see you. Hi, Hi Rose. Hi, Roger. So did you accomplish your mission? What mission? Mom said you had a crisis at the station. You were paged. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is a crisis. The news director's cocked out with the flu. I have to find somebody to manage the 11 o'clock segment. So uh, oh. dinner's out for me. Uh-huh. Well, it's a good night for bad luck. Ross has misplaced his keys. We can't find them oh, anywhere. No. Uh, we haven't checked the parking lot. Why don't you two go ahead? I'll, I'll uh, it's a thought. Well, maybe. I'll join you out there. All right. Oh. Did you read the document? I wish I hadn't. Why? Guess who one of the trustees is? My darling daughter. Why? Why would she be in I was thinking about it on the way over. I figure it's got to be because she was married to Philip at the time that Alan was convicted. It doesn't matter why. Right. What matters is what he'll do to try to get her to sign over the assets to him. If he lays a finger on her. So, question is, what do we do? I mean, she obviously has no idea. Should we tell her? I can't believe Ross has never told her. Well, he probably thinks he's protecting her, keeping her in the dark. When being kept in the dark ever help anybody? She needs to know how to protect herself. I feel like I opened Pandora's box. I mean, if I hadn't stolen those keys, we wouldn't know anything about this. We wouldn't be standing here being scared I mean, to death. That's what you said. Nobody's ever helped by being kept in the dark. Now, look, I'll be meeting with Alan. I will know a lot more after that. Knowledge is power. The more I find out, the more we'll be able to protect Blake from him. You think he's going to tell you all his plans? Well, not at once. So I just have to work out some sort of relationship with him. Just be careful, because you know he blames you. Of anybody, he blames you for going to jail. And Alan does not forget or forgive. Neither do I, especially where our daughter's involved. I'll be careful. OK. The keys. Oh. You know, Alan, it's good to see you focused again. For a while there, I wasn't so sure. Ah, you're referring to Miss Hill. I know you think Tangy was a, a dangerous detour there for a while. I almost believed it myself. But actually, she's always been a part of the plan. Not Tangy herself, but the idea and desire of having someone share in my triumph. I just had no idea 
It would happen so quickly. Yes. But now that I've found her, I don't plan to let her slip away. Does she share your feelings? How could she? She doesn't even know who I am or what I can provide for. But she soon will. Now that Roger's in place, I can move more quickly. As long as I have the element of surprise, I can lay the groundwork without anyone suspecting a thing. We have nothing to fear. Everything is going exactly as planned. You look so beautiful. <laughs> oh, come here, honey. Oh, doesn't she look great? Of course she does. I'm always sitting my mm. little cousin looks great. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. Oh, did you see the ring that you gave me? Oh, that is so pretty. Oh, yes. Yeah. Did she had yeah. to make room for a new one? Mm -hmm. Just a little, no um... No oh, yes, I am. Oh, <laughs> you are? Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, Uncle Ed, I don't even know what to say. Well, don't say anything. Just be happy for us. <laughs> well, I am. Wow, oh, hi, everybody. Hi. Gosh, you look great. I had to take a picture of everybody. <laughs> yeah, actually, please do, please do, because we have two special occasions going on here. First, an engagement. Wow. And second, my brother has a nice outfit on. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that before, but I already have a picture of your brother. Did you show them? No, don't. Um... Why? You're kidding me. You ought to see this. Your brother was the one that saved my niece. And he never told anybody. Matt? Well, you are just full of surprises, aren't you? What else have you got up your sleeve? <laughs> From you? <laughs> Michelle, her dad, and Dr. Guthrie. Oh, now I understand why you've been working on your hair all day. Oh, uh, the there, Michelle? Yeah. Uh, no, they just called. They're on their way. They're a little late, but they will be here. Yeah, Good. they had to go pick up Bridget and her brother. Mm -hmm. You really think this guy's going to show up this time, huh? I don't know, but... We can all have a good time at dinner. Yeah. Hey, Dylan, how are you doing? Oh, I'm so glad you could come. Yeah. Can't stay long. I just wanted to thank you for inviting me. Come on. Say hello. Stick around, man. I mean, you haven't had dinner with your family in a hundred years. I know. I've missed you, too. But, you know, it's just tense with Bridget right now. I think it'd be easier for everyone if I just sat it out. No, uh, Dylan, you cannot go through your whole life sitting it out. You, 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 her family and your family are very close now, thanks to little Peter. So you'd better figure out some way to compromise. Well, thank you, Henry. I know what you're saying, but it's just too soon. It's okay. I'm sorry, though. Right. Um, maybe I'll try to come by the house and we'll get caught up, okay? okay. See ya. Excuse me. Dylan. <laughs> Why aren't you staying? I told you. Yeah, I heard you. But something about what you said doesn't sound right to me. Are you going to tell me what's really going on here? Here you are. Well, I've been out in the patio the past five minutes. Oh, well, we we couldn't find the keys, so now Ross is in a bad mood, too. <clears throat> of course, it doesn't help watching everybody fawn all over Vanessa. You know, she has poisoned her father's mind, too. Did you realize that? Henry Chamberlain barely said hello to you, either. Henry may have been thrown by the fact I was on my hands and knees under the table combing the floor. Well, I don't understand where your keys are. <laughs> oh, please. Let's move on to the bar. I really can't stand listening to this noise tonight. Mm. as much as I have, Mr. Tashua. This is going to be a real red-letter night. For a good night's sleep, Cuvel helps stop leg cramps before they start. My father gave me one of these when I was a boy. I think his intention was that I feel humbled by my pathetic insignificance in the face of an expanding universe. But it didn't work, did it, Mr. Thorpe? Some of us know at a very early age that we are destined for greatness. Because we are not afraid of power, we know how to use it. There is an art that can't be learned. It's innate. Don't you agree? 
Sounds like you're getting ready to embark on one of your philosophical discourses. Ancient wisdom of the Far East. The only discourse I want to hear is the assurance that you've obtained Alexander Spaulding's signature. Well, that signature won't be necessary. Not necessary. Well, you only needed it to arm yourself against Alan Spaulding. Exactly. Mr. Spaulding will be released from prison soon. But he's harmless, Tashua. He poses no threat to us. Where did you get that idea? Well, I've been doing a little investigating. I put my own opinions aside and uh, went out of my way to talk to people who really knew him well. It's a lovely, lovely wine. Um, at any rate, the consensus was that he is of no significance anymore. Now, you think about it. His assets have been stripped away, his position filled. His company is not only surviving without him, it is flourishing. He's been rendered completely impotent, so why bother with him at all? You bother because you were told to bother. That is the way it must be to share in the profits of our venture. Well, I think there might be another way. And it will give me the greatest pleasure to explain it to you. Well, Matt, your parents are going to be really impressed when they see this. You know what they say about a picture being worth a thousand words? Yeah, no, my parents will think I took it someplace and had it doctored. Oh, come on. Tell them to call me, all right? I'll vouch for you. Actually, you know, Mom's going to cry when she sees this. And when she sees the picture of how you look tonight, I mean, oh, forget about it. She's just going to only be able to think about how you looked on your first communion. Oh, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, don't you think we better be getting to dinner? Yeah, actually, oh, I just have to tell Peter's nanny. Oh, Vanessa sent Mary over. I have to make sure that she knows where everything is. Who wants to see my beautiful boy before we go? Nah, not us. We've I seen him. Like... Oh, boring. Come on. Hey, hey well, I'll look at it. Well, I like doll face better than you two anyway. <laughs> hey, why didn't you want them to see it? I told you it would be out in the papers tomorrow anyway. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lucy. Are you running from the cops? You know, I think you better make up your mind whether I'm a hero or a bad guy. No, you're not a bad guy. I know you're not a bad guy. You're just running from something because it's the only thing that would explain this behavior. Look, Matt, I know that, that you think that I'm this, this perky little yuppie wannabe that, you know, grew up wearing white gloves. But I'm not. I'm really not. I grew up with this dad that made a career out of dragging me out of bed at three o'clock in the morning so we wouldn't have to pay the motel bill. So I know, I know a lot about what it's like to keep a low profile from the cops. Look, I didn't do anything I'm ashamed of, but the cops, they, they might have a different opinion, but they're wrong. But the thing is, if they find me, I'm not sure they'll believe my side of the story. Look, you don't have to explain anything to me, okay? Look. Someone loaned me a car in Indiana. And when I didn't jump when she said jump, she decided to report it stolen. Along with a few other choice details. Brother, is she married? Yeah. Yeah, it turned out she was. I guess she forgot to tell me that. Nice lady, huh? Yeah, so you can see why I don't especially want my picture splattered all over the front page. Boy, do I ever, and why I misjudged you and you never defended yourself. <laughs> Made your life terrible, huh? I'm sorry, all right? I, I won't do it anymore. Thanks. Sure. And, um, hey, I'll promise that the picture won't go in the paper, okay? And mum's the word on Indiana. It's the least I can do for you saving my niece's life. Matt, would you come on? Well, I guess I better get going. Can't keep the great Vanessa waiting. I, I don't know what else I can tell you, Indy. You can tell me why you're giving up so easily. 
villain. What you and Bridget had together was so real. It was different from anything that you've ever had with any other girlfriend. And there have been other girlfriends, and some of whom you've even gotten pretty serious with, but... Even when you were about to marry Julie, I never saw you look at her that the way that you look at Bridget. See, that's why I can't stay here tonight. Because it hurts too much. This isn't easy for me. Well, then fix it. If you love her that much, you have to make it work. It's that simple. And nothing is simple, okay? Trust me on that one. You're married. You're all settled. You... Oh, what? You think I'm some happy little housewife now? Aren't you? Happy, I mean? Yeah, I'm happy. It's just that... Marriage has its own set of challenges, and if you think that I don't have to make adjustments in my life anymore, you're wrong. We all have to make adjustments, Dylan. We all have to fight for what we believe in. That's what Daddy taught us. And that's why us Lewises make a lot of noise sometimes, but at least we tell it like it is. We're not like some families I know who smile at each other during a turkey dinner and then plot each other's murder behind their backs. Look, Dylan, all I'm trying to say is that... We love you very much, and we're a close family, and I don't want you to push us away because we can help you through this. Mom wants to know if everything's okay. Yeah, everything's just fine. I'm just trying to get Dylan to stick around. Why? I mean, if he doesn't want to stay, why should we make him? He's a pretty smart kid, isn't he? Oh, come on now. Cheer up. Now, let's not let Dylan's having to leave cast a pall on our dinner party. Yeah, yeah, well, speaking of dinner, are we going to be eating any time this century, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still waiting for the guest of honor to show up. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Tell you what, if Mr. Reardon doesn't show up tonight, I think I'll go to the boarding house myself and drag him here by his hair. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> spirit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. The trouble with our arrangement is that it's very one-sided. I have no desire to hear your complaints. You agreed to do it my way. Oh, not to worry, not to worry. All that is needed is one little change, and we will be right back on track. Just one little change. And Mr. Thorpe said, let there be light and lo! Come on, Alan, what are you waiting for? You were locked up for five years. Aren't you getting a little tired of the dark? crazy for wanting to work for a detective agency, but I think it could be a lot of fun. It could also be dangerous. I don't feel very good about it either, darling. You two just don't have enough faith in me. This, I, I'm made for this kind of work. I'm great at finding things. Oh, yeah? I'll find my keys. Okay, I will. Honey, I'm kidding, Like. Well, I'm not. Watch my smoke. What? Why are you looking at me like that? You home, right? How about you look a little off? No, I'm fine. I'm just as concerned about her as she, you are. Excuse me. Look. How do I know? Um, Matt, did you get the, the ticket thing from the Valley Parker guy? No, you need it? Yeah. Hi. Ah, this is a hungry-looking group. I hope you didn't wait for us. Oh, no, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I'm sorry we kept you waiting. It's fine. We all know how you doctors are. <laughs> Hello. Oh, uh, Michelle? Sweetheart, why don't you sit next to Bill? Vanessa, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> don't tell me. What? You lost your brother again. <laughs> I wish. No, I'm kidding. Um, he went to the Valley Parker guy to get the deal. He, okay. he should be here any second. Oh, here he is. 